Okay, now I'm going to talk about the compressor and pumps. And you may be thinking, whoa, why is he covering these two things together? It looks completely different in terms of like air compressor that we have and a pump, right? I think you, some of you may have gotten already, got this already, but this compressor is for gases because liquids are typically incompressible. I cannot compress them, okay? And this pump is for liquids, okay? I pump uh, water or something. And they operate in a similar principle in a sense that the, the ultimate goal of a compressor and pump is to increase the pressure, okay? And you can think of this compressor and a pump as the opposite to a turbine, okay? And I don't mean you can reverse a turbine and put some work in and get some pressure out, in, increase pressure out. What I mean is in terms of the fundamental principle from thermodynamics point of view, okay? Um, so you can see over here what's happening. So I have an M dot inlet and I have an M dot outlet. But this time, remember, I have an air compressor where I want to, uh, you know, put some air into my tires. I have to connect this to the uh, power outlet, right? Because I am putting energy into my system, okay? So W dot in or W in doesn't matter. Uh, will not be uh, zero, so I have to put some work in, okay? Same thing with pump, it says that one half horsepower, right? So if you want to pump a fluid from a lower elevation to higher elevation, I have to pay for it, right? I have to put some energy into the um, system. So from that angle, it's the opposite to a turbine. And one thing I want to also highlight is sometimes we say it's adiabatic, but I'm not sure it's very accurate because if you have uh, if you have an air compressor as an example, if you touch the outside of it, it's going to get slightly uh, warm, right? That will be some kind of a heat loss. You can ignore that to be you know some value, but if you look at the, for instance compressors are also at your refrigerator at the back of it, okay? And if you put uh, you know if you put your hand above your um, you know refrigerator. The refrigerator is heating up your kitchen, okay? That is the heat loss from the compressor, along with other components too, but this is the main, main component of it, okay? So we have to be careful about this adiabatic um, assumption, okay? Um, obviously, in this, uh, you know, this is a one net, one outlet case, so M dot inlet will be M dot out or exit, um, so that will be M dot, okay? So that, that's fine, but I don't want to write the conservation of energy because, you know, there's nothing much I can do about it. But typically we neglect it, you know, just like what we did for the turbine pretty much. The velocities or kinetic energies as well as the potential energies we don't have to worry about because the H value will be um, quite different or rather quite high compared to the other ones, okay? I think that's, you know, um, all I gotta say about the compressors slash pumps. But what I want to do is solve a question to illustrate how this all comes together, okay? And let me write the question again. I don't want you to watch me writing a bunch of sentences. I'll write back. Okay. I have a refrigerant. So this is for, uh, as the name says, refrigerant is for refrigerator, as an example, or HVAC systems. So in this particular case, this is for a refrigerator, okay? And I have 134A. That's the refrigerant that I use. And the int entrance, or rather the, uh, you know, inlet information is given as 200. 40 kilopascals and minus 3 degrees. You see it's uh, kind of different than what I'm used to now. It's negative, right? Because the melting temperature of the refrigerant is quite different compared to water, okay? Okay, so this is the pressure, this is the temperature. And the leaves, it also tells me that it leaves. The pressure is, see what happens? It is the reverse to the uh, turbine. So in the turbine, what I had is I had a high pressure and come out as a low pressure. Now this is opposite to it. I'm increasing the pressure. So I have to put some work into the system, okay? And it, obviously when I increase the temperature, the, 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 excuse me, when I increase the pressure, the temperature will go up too as a side effect of it, okay? And if the inlet flow rate is given, so the inlet flow rate. So I want to ask you immediately, what is this? Is it M dot? No, it is volumetric flow rate is given to me this time. As I mentioned to you before, in fluid mechanics, or rather the fluid's application of these things, we use mostly volumetric flow rate, not mass flow rate. And it says the power input to the compressor is 3.75 kilowatts. So it's saying that the W dot in uh, is 3.75 kilowatts. It's asking me the heat loss in the compressor. So basically it's asking me how much am I warming the uh, kitchen. I'll do my approach will be very similar to what I did before in a sense that I'll, I'll go to the state one and I find uh, where I'm at, superheated vapor, compressed liquid, uh, mixture, etc., and proceed and see what happens, okay? Okay, so refrigerant uh, 134A is listed a table A12 at the back of Jengal Appendix 1 in this particular case because this is a psi. And I look at that 240 kilopascal, it gives me the saturated temperatures minus 5.38 degree C. 
okay? So as you can see, my temperature, be careful about these minuses, sometimes it throws you off, okay? Um, I don't, why didn't I put this? Yeah. Um, you know, minus three is higher than minus five. I'm sure you realize that, but sometimes in the exam that doesn't happen. Um, you you kind of get confused and you put this as a higher value than so you say this is a compressed liquid. And so that throws off the entire uh, question for you. Okay, be careful. So in here, as I'm higher than T saturated, just like what I did for the steam, now I'm in this superheated region. So I'll look at eight eight thirteen. You know, just like uh, you know, like one table after the uh, you know mixture region. And I simply go ahead and uh, find that I have uh, T, which is the saturated, uh, in this particular case, is minus 5.38, and I have a zero listed. My temperature is uh, right here, like right? minus 3, so I have to do some kind of interpolation. And I have my H in terms of the kilojoule per kilogram is uh, listed in here, so this number is 247.32, this number is 251.98, uh, if I do it, what you're going to see over here is I need to find this value, right? So that, that's going to be H at minus 3 degrees C. And if you do interpolation, I did it, you'll see that the H will be 249.38, okay? Always double check that, you know, it kind of makes sense, right? I'm in between those two numbers and, you know, right, I'm close to the half of it, uh, you know, ish. So you can see the number is uh, kind of half of ish, right? So that kind of makes sense, so I, that makes me happy, okay? So that is, uh, you know, at the inlet. So let's look at the exit. Um, in the exit, it's 600, uh, you know, I was kind of lazy and I didn't go back to the A12 to find it. Uh, but I know that as the temperature is uh, 43 degrees, I'm pretty sure it's going to be superheated vapor too, okay? Because the pressure is increasing, temperature is increasing, but, you know, a, a more responsible students should go to the A12 and double check at 600 kilopascal, what is the saturated temperature, etc. So I go to the A13 and I look at 600 kilopascal and I'm trying to find the 43 degrees and you can guess it's not listed, right? The temperature, these two are listed in terms of the Celsius and my H's are given as 280.60 and 290.30 and I'm at 43 uh, degrees C and I do an interpolata interpolation myself and I get this H at 43 degrees C uh, as 283.51 kilojoule per kilogram. So this is good. This is H1, this is H2. So H1 and H2. So I know H1 and H2. So I'm kind of ready to uh, attempt to find the final answer using the conservation of energy. So let's write it q.net minus w.net will be equal to n dot times h exit plus v exit squared by 2 plus gz exit minus h inlet plus v inlet squared by 2 plus gz inlet and i did it many times so i'm not going to spend all the time but the potential energy changes uh, and the kinetic energy changes will be neglected over here i wasn't given any information to begin with anyways what can you do right um and what about the q net so the q net will be q in minus q out right so the q in is zero i'm not putting any heat into the system actually the heat is being lost uh, from the system, from the compressor, right? So that's gonna stay. And W dead is W dead out minus W dot in. I wish I can extract energy from it, but that's not realistic, so that's not gonna happen. I'm only gonna have W dot in. So then if I look at it, what do I get? Minus Q dot out uh, minus minus plus W dot in will be equal to mass flow rate times. Now I have to do something, okay? It gave me the uh, volumetric flow rate as uh, what 0.5 meter cube per minute. So volumetric flow rate is equal to 0.5 meter cube per minute. I don't like this one bit, okay? But I gotta do what I gotta do. I have to convert this to the mass flow rate. So that's gonna be rho times volume uh, that. So what am I gonna take the density um, as? This is the, the inlet. It's given to me as the inlet. Okay, so I'm gonna do a, a tactic where I do this as one of our uh, specific volume is density, right? So I simply write that. And this information I can find at minus 3 degrees C at the inlet. Okay, at minus 3 degrees C. Why? Because I already looked at it, where is it? Right uh, here, right? Right here. I find this for H. So now I will also write the specific uh, volume. So let me go ahead and do exactly that. Specific volume, and this will be meter cube per kilogram. So you can see this is 0 0.08398, 0 
0.8617. Again, I do interpolation for minus 3, and I get this uh, as 0 0.08495. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm in the middle of these two, okay? Again, somewhere in the close to half-ish, okay? So that's good. So I'm going to use this information. If I go down over here, um, I'm going to use this mass flow rate will be the volumetric flow rate but the only uh, caveat over here is this is given in terms of, uh, uh, you know, per minute. So I have to convert this to per second, right? So in order to do that, it's kind of simple. 60 seconds is in a minute, isn't it? So, okay, then this is becomes 0 0.5 meter cube divided by 60 is what in terms of uh, every second time. So rather than divided by 1008495 meter cube per kilogram. Let me see. You see meter cubes cancel over here, and this kilogram, when it goes to the numerator, it will go upside down as a kilogram per second. Good. This units match too. So, okay. So now I, I know my end dot, and I simply copy this 0 0.5 divided by 60, 0 0.08495. Um, that is the end dot, and H exit is 283.51 minus 249.38. And these are in, uh, let's make sure, kilojoule per kilogram. These are, uh, you know, the final uh, of this whole thing is kilogram per second. So you can see kilograms can still. I get kilojoule per second, which is kilowatts. So I'm consistent, okay? And W, uh, uh, let's do it, minus Q dot out, that's what being asked, plus 3.75 kilowatts. That's what is given as will be equal to 3.35 kilowatts when I multiply those things, okay? So you can see over here that my Q dot out turns out to be uh, 0 0.4 kilowatts, okay? Or this is 400 watts. So if I have a fridge in my kitchen, now it is generating 400 watts. As if I have a heater on in the summer, in the middle of the summer here in Florida, it's like right now, let me see actually to give you an idea. Right now it's 91 Fahrenheit, okay? So, but my, my the refrigeration, the refrigerator that I have over there, like as if I have a 400 watt heater on, it's heating. That's why AC is even working harder and harder, okay? All right, that was so much un unnecessary information, but you know, it is okay. All right, have a good day. This is gonna do it for me.